Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome to Adventures in Small Business, a collaboration between the U.S. Small Business Administration, Hawaii District Office, the Hawaii Small Business Development Center, the Ming Center for Business and Leadership, and the Veterans Business Outreach Center of the Pacific to showcase the local stories of entrepreneurs and small businesses. My name is Victoria, I'm a business advisor at the VBOC of the Pacific, and today I will be talking to great entrepreneurs, John and Jen, who are opening a restaurant here in Hawaii. Welcome to our show. Thank, thank you for you. having us. Thank you for being here. Uh, thank you for coming to uh, share your wonderful story. Um, so can you please introduce yourself briefly and tell us a little bit more about your background? Okay, my name is, want me to go first? Sure. Okay, my name is John Enriquez. I'm a eight-year Army veteran, I'm medically retired. Um, I currently work for the federal government as a equipment specialist, a logistician, that's what I do. Mm -hmm. and I heard about two bronze stars. Can you please tell me <laughs> more about it? Well, I've been, um, throughout my eight years of service, I was deployed four times and I was um, honored, and I am honored to have received two Bronze Stars, yes. And can you tell me what does it mean, uh, getting a Bronze Star, um, for people who don't know? Well, I, I was given both Bronze Stars deployed, and it's basically for, for service uh, and the, the mission that was accomplished during my deployments. Very impressive. Thank you for your service. Thank you. <laughs> and Jen? Hello, thank you for having me. So my background is I have over 16 years of business management experience. I'm a University of Phoenix graduate. Um, I have, I'm actually in my doctoral program, so I've learned a lot of businesses through private sector um, and also was a contractor at one point uh, servicing the Army redeployment and deployment uh, missions. And I currently work for a global organization as well. I uh, help uh, elderly um, candidates to live longer and right now I'm just looking forward to opening this restaurant with John. Wow, that's yeah. a very impressive background. So it seems like you're wearing a lot of hats yes. right now. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's great. So John, how do you think, um, how military experience helped you in business planning process and running a business? Um, my military experience, a lot of the skills that I think pertain to opening a business or a restaurant would be uh, critical thinking, the, the ability to think on your feet and on the go and to handle stress and yeah. adapting to different situations. Um, in the military, we're deployed or we're in a fast-paced environment and it's the same uh, in a restaurant industry. Yeah. So, you know, the, the ability to combine what I've learned and the uh, the skills that I learned to put it into a business, that's, that's what really have helped me. Yeah, and uh, in military you probably always have to have a plan and you know that that plan can change yes. many times, right? Yes. So the same in entrepreneurship, right? Yes, um, Jen can speak on it too, but we've gone through multiple um, locations in Kapole. We had to revise our business plans multiple times based on the location. So. Uh, we do have a plan, but when the plan does change, we do have to adapt as a team together and work together to, to accomplish what we need to accomplish. And you have to stay calm. And you process. have to stay calm in the process, yes. <laughs> That's important. Have faith and just believe in each other, pretty much. Yes. Nice. So, yeah, I truly believe military experience helped you guys, right? Yes, for sure. Uh, yes. What about you, Jen? For the military, although I wasn't in the military, I worked for the Army as a contractor. Uh, the fast-paced business, you know, as far as the mission, you know, there's a mission to be accomplished and to see the soldiers uh, just having to be focused and keeping them focused and uh, accomplishing their mission and being that leader, I think that's helped with helping developing this uh, organize this company and uh, so just the, the so many moving parts in other words uh, in the military I'm sure as John knows uh, and you have to be flexible and agile at the same time and so being having those characteristics as an individual opening a business you have to be flexible and agile so yeah it's helped 
For sure. And then you also have an impressive education, too, so I'm sure that helped. Oh, absolutely. I have to give credit to University of Phoenix. Uh, they, the education that I've received from them, they, they've helped me along the way. The, and also, if I, if you don't mind, John is also a University of Phoenix MBA grad. Yes, I am. Uh, and Jen, Jen has been my mentor through my undergraduate and my graduate program. Yes. So, so we, I've known Jen since Guam, back in Guam, yes. when I was graduating high school. Nice. Yes. So. Yes. So I think, uh, in combination, our education has really helped us. Uh, put our skills into practice in developing Biva Craft Hawaii. Uh, just the whole business plan, the research and, and development process, it's become an integral part of the process. So uh, business plan was not easy at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, if I may go into that, it, that that's uh, challenging because you have to really research the industry that you're going into. Food and beverages is one of the most challenging, I would like to say, industries to go into. You gotta look at your competitive market and look at your position and where you're opening. And being in Kapolei is the growing city of Oahu. And it's was it's been challenging. And then there is a lot more challenges to come, but being supportive and and flexible, I think has helped. But I don't know. And the V Bog too. The, yes. Yeah. Oh, I have to give yes credit <laughs> to the V Bog. Oh yes, absolutely. You guys have been there since day one yeah. and stuck with us throughout the vision and the challenges and just the services that you render ha has been such a huge part in the process. I, I I don't know how we could have done it without you guys. Yeah, Dennis, <laughs> Dennis and his team yes. walked us through step by step from day one. Yes. And he made us do the work. He made us understand uh, the ins and outs of the business pro uh, business proposal and what we need to have and what we need to ensure that we, we have in our business proposal to be successful. Well, I'm glad we were able to oh, help goodness. you guys. It's really rewarding working with entrepreneurs like you, really driven and motivated uh, mm -hmm. entrepreneurs. So for those who don't know what VBOC is, uh, VBOC is the Veterans Business Outreach Center, and you can sign up for our services. We do one-on-one -on -one business consultation, as well as Boots to Business Entrepreneurship course. Uh, have you participated in the entrepreneurship course, Boots mm, to Business? Well, I, I did inquire uh, about the Boots to Business. Uh, it's just you have to go through a long two weeks course and I just don't have that time to dedicate to that. But working with uh, the V Box Center and um, with Dennis and his team, um, you know, it, it opened our eyes a lot to you know, what we need to do. Yeah. And Jen could also speak on it, but uh, one of the banks that we uh, went forward with, with getting our loans, they used our business proposal as a model uh, wow. to other clients and to other lenders of what a good business proposal, startup business plan is supposed to look like. So, wow. yeah, kudos to you guys and us for our hard work. Well, thank you, thank you yes, for yes, working yes. with us. It's yes. a pleasure. So, yeah, uh, Boots to Business is a two-day entrepreneurship two course days. for uh, people who are just starting a business. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, of course, for you, probably a follow-up course of six weeks yeah. Mississippi State University yeah. would be the best but of course one-on-one uh, -on -one consultations are always great because you can actually work on your own unique case with consultants yes so yeah we looking forward to continue our uh, work together absolutely so can you tell me a little bit about your um, motivation to start a restaurant business? And I heard that you had a lot of different ideas. And food and beverage business, as you mentioned, is probably one of the riskiest. And especially in Hawaii, it's it's really tricky to start a food and beverage business. So how did you decide to well, go for it? Um, our motivation is people and our culture. So Guam, we... Um, Guam is our culture. We like to share meals. We like to gather. And the way both Jen and I and our, our other business partner, CJ, uh, the way we like to see people happy is through food and beverage and through expressing our culture through food and beverage and gathering and, you know, sharing the aloha or, um, you yes. know, the aloha spirit. Because in, in Guam, it's the same way. So everything's very family-oriented. Nice. Yes, um, and to add to that, we want to bring the taste of Guam to Hawaii. Yes. As of now, as of we know, there is no restaurant in Hawaii that serves Chamorro food. So mm -hmm. we look forward to bringing that exotic 
taste to Hawaii. And much like Hawaii, Guam is very ohana oriented. And being that we can bring our culture to Hawaii, and we know there's a lot of uh, different ethnic groups here in Hawaii, Hawaii is a melting pot. So to be able to add to that, to the industry and being, bringing more food into the market, I think is the motivation to, to deliver that, to give something to the community that they haven't had or they don't have at the moment. So if you ask anybody who's tried Chamorro food, I'm sure they're gonna be like, oh, I love it. <laughs> um, so it, it's something that is a huge treat to the community. So we look forward to sharing that. So that's part of the motivation, is to keep our culture alive in, mm -hmm. in such a way of our Ohana environment. I'm really excited to try your food. Yes, yeah. we can't wait. <laughs> so what about other business ideas? You guys had the multiple uh, um, options ideas. Well, as soon as I graduated with my, uh, as soon as I completed my MBA program, uh, I would think of multiple businesses. Like I said, I've known Jen for years, and I would see Jen at functions or at gatherings or whatnot, and I would ask her, Jen, what do you think about this idea? What do you think about a brewery? Could you help mm -hmm. me write my business proposal? Or um, I wanted to do a juice bar and uh, juice bar by day, um, bar by night, and I was going to call it gin and juice, right? <laughs> and I was asking Jen, and Jen was like, yeah, you know, just let me know. And every time I would ask her, she'd tell me, um, you know, I'd be in for as a, you know, tomorrow inspired restaurant. And months would go by, we'd have multiple gatherings, and I would notice people from different cultures uh, that aren't even from Guam would come to our parties, and they would they would always mention, man, this would be great in a restaurant or, or a bar concept or whatnot. And working at Pine and Jigger for uh, you know for a while now, and I would see different um, different service members would come through, mm -hmm. and a lot of them had been stationed in Guam and recognized that I am from Guam, so they would you know always mention that. And one day um, I just contacted Jen. I said, Hey, let's do this. You know, this is a great idea. Um, it's a great way to get our culture out there and get Guam out there and bring something new to Hawaii that Hawaii's never seen before. You know, there are food trucks on Guam uh, on Hawaii that. Um, have Guam food, but nobody's doing it in a um, in the environment that we're gonna we're gonna provide. Okay, can you please tell me more about your environment, your concept of biba? I know it's gonna be Guam food. It's gonna be um, a lot of beer options. Well, it's, How it's gonna look. Well, it's basically a family focus or family environment uh, with a, a, gastro tub, a gastro pub type feel. So yes, more high-end cocktails, more high-end beers, but the focus is really um, being able to bring your family and friends and you know just having a good time and gathering and sharing meals with each other. So that's pretty much what the concept is. It's, very, it's gonna be very uh, family oriented. Right. Yes, and, and, and to add to that, we look forward to supporting local breweries, uh, local artists, and hopefully we'll be able to facilitate uh, acoustic you know, uh, bands and, and whatnot, and just be able to have a place on the west side of Oahu that they can come to and have a, a, a time, a good time. The experience is important, so the concept is for them to come in, enjoy some cocktails and good food, and, and just relax. and have a good time because I think a lot of these type of restaurants slash gastropubs are uh, central or rather in Honolulu, Waikiki. So we want to bring that to the second city of Oahu and that's the goal is to, to deliver that to the community. Yes, for sure. That sounds great. Yes. Can't wait for yes, this. Yes. <laughs> so we are going on a short break and we will be back shortly. Hello, my name is Stephanie Mock, and I'm one of three hosts of Think Tech Hawaii's Hawaii Food and Farmers series. Our other hosts are Matt Johnson and Pamai Weigert, and we talk to those who are in the fields and behind the scenes of our local food system. We talk to farmers, chefs, restaurateurs, and more to learn more about what goes into sustainable agriculture here in Hawaii. We are on at Thursdays at 4 p.m., and we hope we'll see you next time. Hi everyone, I'm Andrea Gabrielli. I'm the host for Young Talents Making Way here on FinTech Hawaii. We talk every Tuesday at 11 a.m. about things that matters to tech, matter to science, to the people of Hawaii with some extraordinary guests, the students of our schools who are participating in science fair. 
So Young Talents Making Way every Tuesday at 11 a.m. only on FinTech Hawaii. Mahalo. Welcome back to Adventures in Small Business. Today we are talking to John and Jen, uh, small business owners who are opening a restaurant here in Hawaii. So if we continue our discussion, uh, what were the biggest challenges when planning a business and planning a restaurant business, which is one of the hardest um, ventures to Can do? Speak on it? Yeah, sure. So the business planning is very, specific and challenging in itself. So you have to have a good business plan. And to have a good business plan, you have to have a vision. Uh, also, do your research in the industry that you are going into. And then also the financing part. So those, I think, three factors are challenging because positioning ourselves in a growing city could be challenging because property. That was one of our challenges is, is finding perfect property for us because when you open it's not just about your your company but also where you're positioned so that was challenging I mean that I think took the longest but not only that is the financing part you know having banks look at our business plan and believing in our vision believing in our concept and receiving that as we receive it so your business plan tells a story it should tell a story and with it being telling a story when the banks look at it they have to feel something like, okay, yeah, I think this is this is good, or I'm not sure, it's too risky. So when you are developing a business plan, what is your budget? You know, what is your budget for this organization? Uh, with the restaurant, it can be quite expensive, and um, and it is expensive. So having the proper uh, research to check and balance the items that you're financing is important. So um, not only that is you as an individual have to have money too. <laughs> you, yeah. know? you can't go and go to the bank and say, okay, give me all the money I need to open a you know, restaurant or whatever you're inspired to open. You have to also have your finances in order. Yeah. So if you want to go you know, uh, talk a little bit more about the financing part. Um, basically, it's both financing and um, finding a location. Uh, one of the real major struggles that we went through is finding a location, right? The landlord wants uh, money or funding, mm -hmm. and the banks want a location. So sometimes the landlords don't wait on your, your uh, of you getting approved for um, a business loan or whatnot, but it's you know, finding the support from a, a realtor, a good realtor, an architect to have everything aligned where it's both, you know, it, it comes both at the same time. So it's really, they don't tell you that when you when you do your, your business planning or mm -hmm. go out for a loan. But like Jen said, location is very important. And on the west side, there isn't many, many yeah. available locations out there. And so you just got to find a team that believes and the same, you know, people that believe in your vision as well and time it perfectly. That's all, it's, it's all about timing. Yes, and we're so happy that VBOC helped us find the bank that financed us. Yes, <laughs> So we sure. appreciate that and so n everybody in your team should see the vision and believe in the vision and uh, that's the challenging part because there we had to go through a couple realtors, I believe, yeah. to find the one who was gonna stick with us. And multiple and, banks. And multiple banks, you know, we, we did go through and if you're really truly inspired by your vision, you will stick to it. You won't throw in the towel. And there have been challenges where we're just like, okay, I don't know, let's just throw in the towel. But we stuck to it and we're, we're, we're gonna see the fruits of our labor and yeah. it's gonna come to fruition. We, we always tell each other, we just need one yes. We just need that one yes and then, you know, we could go out there and show the world what we have to offer. Or Oahu, what we have to offer. The world. <laughs> so yeah, I think what's most important is actually having that vision, and as you mentioned, and having a passion. Because if you don't have passion, you're probably gonna stop working on that venture yes, sooner sure. or later, right? Yes. Because yes. it requires a lot of work, a lot of effort, a lot of patience, yes. right? Yes. So when writing a business plan, um, you were very good with marketing and sales and describing your concept, very creative. But what about financial part? What was the most difficult 
the research, area. I think, for the the appliances, how much the food is going to cost us, yes. you know, the food and beverages. So we did, so you, VBOC helped us, the team helped us with our projections, our 36 month projections, you know, that had to be spot on. And it had to f reflect what we were going to be serving. You know, we did our own weights and measurements of the food that we're going to be serving, the cocktails, yes. right? And yes, uh, sure. John did a lot of research on the appliances, so that you know, really helped with learning how much we need to be able to finance. In addition, I mean, even to the how much the power is going to cost to the yeah. square footage of, mm -hmm. so that is, and like I said, VBOC really helped us with the projections and putting it all together. Uh, yeah, so, but the meat of it, you have to do your research that, and to, to, to learn what you need to get financed. Um, and of course, I mean, to add to that, you have to have good credit. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and money, money to put down. I think one of the um, requirements to put 20% down on uh, on the the amount that you're borrowing. Yeah. And we had to work around our budget. You know, we had to budget based off of you know what we what we can afford to borrow. Right. Really. And I think one of the benefits is the veterans owned small business advantage, the wave mm -hmm. of the fee, if you want to speak on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's it's basically uh, with the veterans program, um, the SBA loan, it waives a lot of fees, kind of like it's compared to a VA home loan, where there are fees that we don't have to pay because of my veteran status. So that was very helpful too, it saved us thousands of dollars. And you also took advantage of the Small Business Administration Guaranteed Loan, right? Yes, correct. So can you tell us a little bit more what's SBA Guarantee Loan for people who don't know? Yeah, so it, what it does is it guarantees the bank, the bank loaner how much, uh, a percentage of that loan being uh, guaranteed that they're going to get their monies back. Mm -hmm. And I think it's about 75% of their loan that I, I could varies. be wrong. Yeah, it varies. Um, and yeah, it does vary depending on how much you're borrowing, yes. Uh, it just guarantees the bank that if we default on any, for any reason, that the banks will get their money, a portion of their money back. Yeah, and just a lot of people have misconception yeah. that SBA is giving uh, people money, but actually they just guarantee the your loan. The bank, yeah. yes. Which is a great help yes. too, because yes. um, startup and a restaurant startup, it's a very risky business, and a lot of uh, bankers, they're really hesitant to yes. jump in. And we know that firsthand. <laughs> <laughs> so SBA loan is a great way to open the restaurant. Yes, right? yes. for sure. Yes. Great. So you were talking a lot about creating a great team. So besides business consultant, what else would you say a business owner should have in their team? Well, um, family, one. Um, I was fortunate that Jen, Jen was my mentor for so many years through my undergraduate and graduate program. Um, I work a lot with the uh, USBG Hawaii, the United States Bartender, Bartenders Guild, um, the Oahu chapter, and they've mm -hmm. helped me a lot understand uh, with understanding, you know, how the bar business or the food and beverage beverage industry works. Um, I work closely with Dave Newman, who's a really good friend of mine. He's the owner of Pine and Jigger, and uh, or one of the owners of Pine and Jigger, and he allowed me to work with him and his staff at uh, his establishment so I could learn the, the ins and outs of the food and beverage uh, industry. Um, like Jen said, you know, weighing out the food or understanding how to break down cocktails, you know, you know, by the scent or, or food, um, you know, I learned a lot from them. So you just got to find people that have the similar uh, motivation and interest that you have and are not selfish but want to see other people succeed. And that's pretty Absolutely. much what we what we are about and what we want to do. So eventually, we could help other restaurant owners or entrepreneurs. Yeah, maybe you can be one of our mentors at <laughs> eBook. Absolutely, yeah. we'd love to. Yeah. So, what about an uh, accountant or a business lawyer? Did you have to work yes. with these people? Yes, we yes we did. Ha I, we file our taxes quarterly, I believe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. We, uh, do. we do. We do have a, an accountant. So yes, we do have professional uh, like CPAs, lawyers. We did have them look at our, uh, at one point we were considering investors. So you know, we, we also talked about 
uh, how we can approach that, or also our business plan and our operating agreement. You know, that's important too amongst mm -hmm. partners. Although we're, we're family, we've known each other, but it's also important to protect yourself as an individual and your family. So an operating agreement helps with that. And a lawyer, our lawyer, looked at the operating agreement to ensure that we are all covered in protecting ourselves as individuals. So that way our families are not impacted in such a way. Uh, but yeah, so lawyers, uh, we also have, so marketing, you know, I think we have a lot of uh, experience and education be between the three of us. Also CJ, he's not, he couldn't be here. Uh, so we, like marketing and um, all those type of things, we do on our own at the moment, but we know in the future we're going to need those professionals to help us keep our brand alive and to promote our organization or our business throughout Hawaii and because uh, we look forward to growing after Hawaii, uh, this location is successful. Yeah, and with that being said, uh, the VBOC, um, whenever we were stumped on something like, hey, we called Dennis and you know we asked him if he could refer us to somebody. So it's all about networking too. Yes, so, absolutely. So, um, what would you say to a person who is looking to open a restaurant here in Hawaii? Uh, what three simple tips would you give them um, to summarize? <laughs> well, I could do one. Go. Um, believe in yourself and believe in your vision. Um, if you don't believe in it and you're not all in 100%, then um, it's probably not going to work out for you. So it's, it's, a, it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. So that's what I've learned and working with uh, the VBOC and my business partners. So vision and believe in, believing in yourself. Yeah, I think that's a great tip, uh, definitely. And business planning, right? Yes, business, oh yes, absolutely. Business planning, doing your research, and sticking to the vision, because at, at, at one time we were diverging to out of the vision, and but we, yeah, so just sticking to the vision and, and definitely having the support around you. Yeah. Perfect. VBOC being one <laughs> of the main ones. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. So uh, where can we find you and when are you guys opening? So we anticipate opening in December. And also, you can find us in Kapolei, Hawaii. Yes. Yep. Okay. And uh, we are on Instagram and LinkedIn. You can find us at Bebo Craft Hawaii on Instagram. Yes. And on LinkedIn, Bebo Craft Hawaii. And look for us in December. We should be opening around then. Yep. Thank you so much, guys. It was a pleasure talking to you today. Stay tuned for more adventures in small business every Thursday, 11 o'clock. Thank you for watching us.